Hello kids, uh, today we will be talking about unit 8 which is chemical reactions for grade 7 science. Uh, uh, let's get into it. Uh, when we talk about chemical reactions in the classroom, we discuss several types of reactions in which we uh, discuss that uh, some reactions uh, can be of uh, you know different uh, you know types and for that uh, when we say about different types we had uh, reactions right so uh, which can either release heat right in terms of heat or energy right so we talked about two types of reaction one was the exothermic reaction right and I told you the word exo refers to exit right keep in mind and the word endo uh, refers to enter right so just remember from the EX and EN enter and exit right so what's an exothermic reaction it's a reaction that releases heat into the surrounding so whatever happens to uh, the chemicals inside you will find that the beaker or this flask is going to get heated up and it will be releasing heat into the surrounding now we had done this in lab right uh, in lab we we reacted an acid with with uh, uh, some salts and we saw that uh, it was heating up the second one was uh, acid uh, in water right acid plus water when we did that that gave us uh, you know heat it was uh, exothermic reaction right and then uh, and please let me just clarify this X right and uh, I said that if acid reacts with salt uh, that is also an exothermic reaction right and uh, we could call burning or combustion right uh, that is a very common example uh, we see every day that is also an exothermic reaction right so all those chemical reactions that release heat are exothermic reactions so uh, if I give a word equation for this right word equation that would be very simple right income in, in terms of combustion let's say combustion right so for combustion I can give this example uh, let's say petrol or fuel gas plus oxygen right will give you uh, carbon dioxide water vapors right water plus carbon dioxide right this is a word equation and along with that this is uh, going to generate heat right so this shows that it's an exothermic reaction right uh, there are several other examples I'll just try to keep this lesson a bit short right uh, we'll move directly to now endothermic reaction and then I will go into more detailed uh, examples of these in terms of comparison right now what are endothermic reactions reactions that absorb heat from the surrounding to proceed right uh, if you do a reaction in which you feel that the beaker or this container has become colder than before uh, it becomes uh, an endothermic reaction right so the common example was uh, we, we discussed that the salt few salts when dissolved in water uh, they are endothermic right so that means you will find that the beaker has become colder uh, more example uh, more simply we, we we said that water uh, plus NaCl is an endothermic reaction right right I'm not going to go much into detail because uh, we need to focus more on how we do these measurements uh, and and a very critical example a very fun example I have is of ice right now let's say you've got an ice cube right uh, it is melting so what do you expect whether it's an uh, exothermic reaction or an endothermic right so if you see that melting occurs when uh, it is absorbing heat uh, from the surrounding right is it uh, absorbing heat so uh, that's how it melts let's say if it's hot outside and the ice ball is uh, this ice cube is colder so it will absorb heat so I will refer melting as an endothermic reaction right although it appears to be uh, something else but uh, the, sorry uh, uh, this wrote wrongly. it's an exothermic reaction right so just a minute so uh, <coughs> oh my bad just a moment uh, something happened to my tablet okay as I was saying that since it is uh, absorbing heat so it is going to be an uh, endothermic reaction right uh, endothermic absorbs heat right it needs to absorb heat from the surrounding to melt down now contrary to this if I go for freezing 
right? What, what about freezing then, right? I'm trying to uh, cool something down. Now remember, when we cool something, we are trying to take away heat uh, from water so that its temperature falls. So the heat is taken away. So that would be termed as an exothermic reaction. Now remember, it's just the flow, this, this direction of, uh, you know, the arrows suggest which one is an endothermic and which one is an exothermic reaction, right? Now, to further clarify how to, uh, how to identify using an experiment, right? So let's devise an experiment. What do we need to do, uh, understand when a reaction is endothermic or exothermic, right? So first, we need apparatus, right? What instruments we need? Number one would be uh, we need uh, a flask, right, in which we're going to run our experiment. Number two, the most critical thing, since heat is uh, in involved, so we need to be able to measure temperature. So for temperature, we're going to have thermometer, right? Sorry, I was writing the quantity. Thermometer, right? So just by two, uh, you know, two basic equipment we need. And number three, uh, we will have stirrer so that the temperature is uh, totally understandable. It's equal, equally uh, distributed. And number four, if you're trying to understand how fast or slow that is going, you can uh, also use a stopwatch to calculate the time. But this is, again, an external uh, calculation. This would be for rate of cooling, right? Rate of heating or cooling. Right. If you want to identify how fast was it happening, right? For now, uh, just to identify uh, exo or endothermic, we just need this. So let's just say you have a flask, right? You put your thermometer in there, right? I'm just going to place this thermometer in there, and you've got your chemical, right? So if the chemical is there, what do you do is uh, the method, right? As a method, what would you do? Number one, step number one would be uh, place thermometer, I mean just uh, in flask, right? Uh, number two, uh, add first chemical, right? Let's say if you're, you've got two chemicals to uh, react, let's say, let's call it chemical A, right? So we have added A in there, right? And then number three, note temperature of A right so you note the temperature uh, number four now add B into it right so add B any other chemical that is going to react and give us the, uh, the difference of temperature add B in flask right I'm just giving you short steps just for the clarity this is not what you're supposed to be writing in the paper because those are going to be available right I just added B and now you see you've got a reaction uh, B was this and A was this, right? And they reacted together, you've got a third product, right? Uh, this is B, right? Now we've added B in there, right? Now, uh, number five, note rise or fall of temperature, right? Once the reaction has, uh, you know, occurred, just note down the temperature. This will tell you, right, if uh, initial temperature, right, initial, temperature or starting temperature, right, we call this as starting temperature, is greater than final, right, then it is going to be endothermic, and if uh, initial temperature is, uh, sorry, sorry, I just wrote this wrong, it's exothermic, it's greater, right? Starting, oh, so yeah, 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 sorry, my bad. I'm making a mistake. Just please don't worry, all right? If the initial temperature is lower, because I was talking about the first temperature, starting temperature, so uh, yeah, definitely, if that is greater, it's going to be endothermic, right? Let's say it was uh, 25 degrees as start, and after the reaction, it came down to 10 degrees, so definitely, uh, the heat has been lost to the environment, right? It, it, sorry, it has absorbed heat from the environment and hence the beaker has become colder. And that is our check uh, that if the beaker becomes colder, it's an endothermic reaction. And if the initial temperature is lower than final, right, then it is going to be an exothermic reaction, right? 
which means that the beaker is now going to be hotter than before. Let's say if it was 25 degrees Celsius as a start, if it goes to 50 degrees Celsius, then this is an exothermic reaction, right? Just giving you an overview, right? Uh, my humble apologies for the little uh, confusion over there, right? I just created confusion, but just don't mind. Uh, as I said, uh, if the rise of temperature is there, uh, then it is exothermic and if the fall of temperature is noted then it's an endothermic reaction right now the more important questions uh, would be uh, reactions right so the first ones that we see are the reactions of metal uh, with oxygen right and uh, I'm going to write the general equation right general equation for this would be uh, metal plus oxygen gives you metal oxide now I distinctly remember I've I wrote these uh, on the board and I, I asked you guys to note these clearly so that you can uh, memorize these plus uh, but still uh, some of you were not able to write these correctly on on the assessment so please mind that these general equations are very important and they might come in the paper again right now uh, if I say word equation now remember general equation means this one in which you do not spe specify which metal are you using right and the name of the compound when I when the question says word equation or example right that means you need to be able to use the name of the metal right so let's just say I uh, say zinc right could be any metal zinc plus oxygen is going to give me zinc oxide right so remember when they say example or word equation uh, for this you need to write in words you're not supposed to use symbols right if I say uh, symbolic equation right or equation symbol right so in that case and again this is the example would would be like right not the general equation so that would be Zn for zinc plus O2 giving you and I need two of zinc to give you two of zinc oxide now forget about these numbers just remember that this is called symbolic equation this is not in your course this is right so just please write these do not uh, you know try to shorten your workout by writing symbols I gave you marks for uh, symbolic answers but uh, make uh, ensure that you don't write symbols until unless the question is stating those but uh, in your grade 7 course uh, symbolic equations are not included only the word equations are there so please uh, mind that I will be deducting marks if you will be writing uh, these uh, symbolic uh, you know equations or symbolic answers in uh, your uh, you know final term paper so uh, these are few examples uh, one is rusting right uh, right the equation of rusting which is most common right in which you've got iron you've got oxygen right and this is a very special case and you need water and why you need water so that this reaction can proceed because iron is a very less reactive metal so it does not really react with oxygen uh, very quickly water accelerates this process right is help the oxygen uh, because oxygen is water soluble that's why the fish are able to uh, survive in water right they they, they consume oxygen uh, uh, which is available inside the water so the water accelerates uh, rusting so this is going to form iron oxide right keep in mind so the, which is we would call as rusting this product is called rusting right so how can you prevent rusting how to prevent rusting I remember I did discuss all methods possible for rusting right uh, so number one method is uh, painting right painting or what we call as coatings right any inert coating inert means uh, that is not going to be react or uh, insulated coating right uh, insulating insulating means anything that prevents oxygen from uh, attacking the iron right number two is oiling oiling also does the same thing it is not an efficient method but it's a cost-effective method and it's temporary right so it's a temporary protection as long as the oil is going to be there uh, it's not going to allow oxygen to penetrate and number three was uh, galvanization right galvanizing and in galvanizing please remember this is a very special method in which we coat uh, or attach Right? not necessarily that we use coat we can also attach a bar attach zinc which is a more reactive metal uh, on iron right so what really happens that zinc is sacrificed right 
because zinc is not a strong metal so it cannot hold the bridge together but the iron will and if the iron is rusting so the bridge can be compromised it may fall it may break it may lead to some uh, you know collateral damage to prevent that we attach zinc bars or coat uh, the metal uh, you know uh, iron uh, bridge with zinc so that it does not rust so it prevents rusting this is galvanizing galvanizing also we we call this as uh, uh, sacrificial protection right one name or the other one is anodic protection right now this name anodic protection you'll learn in O levels right uh, just giving you a heads up as I said I always try to bridge this to the O levels uh, so that you people are uh, you know fully uh, aware of what you will be uh, going through uh, in uh, you know uh, classes on on forward right now these are few reactions more examples I can give uh, you right uh, let's say magnesium uh, with oxygen will give you uh, no I should write vertical just for you people right so uh, examples would be magnesium and this is not just rusting magnesium plus oxygen will give you magnesium oxide right now it's all you have to do is to write the name of the metal and use the word oxide when you're reacting just with the oxygen so uh, it's very easy to give several examples right so don't get confused that it's it's a very hard thing to do it's very simple right now a uh, reaction of metals with water right uh, I'm again going to write the general equation for this uh, general equation and all of this is available in the book that's why uh, I didn't upload any uh, you know lessons earlier because we had discussed this very clearly in in lab and in classroom uh, so all the equations were there that's why I didn't uh, force you to write uh, you know uh, much of these things I just wanted you to note uh, note down these uh, you know important general equations from the book and memorize those so uh, for you I'm just writing those over here as well that metal when reacts with water will produce uh, metal hydroxide right hydro hydro means water right hydroxide plus hydrogen gas right so uh, example uh, or word equation example would be uh, let's say uh, we have uh, magnesium again right magnesium plus water would give you uh, magnesium hydroxide right as said you just need to replace the metal name with the example that you're using nothing else it's not complicated it's very easy and rest of the general equation remains the same right and if I go with the symbolic one the symbolic equation just to signify right it is going to be Mg for magnesium plus water being H2O gives you MgOH right uh, whole twice plus H2 so we're going to have two of the water right just to balance this equation again the numbers are not important what is important that this is how the hydroxide is going to look like another example would be sodium plus water right I will give that equation so it would be sodium hydroxide plus H2 gas so no matter which metal you use just replace the metal name with the hydroxide over here and that's how uh, simple is, is uh, these reactions are right I don't know what was the fuss about uh, these reactions being very hard it's just the general equation that you have to memorize rest just replace the metal name with those I've been uh, repeating these uh, in class several times and I've been asking you guys to memorize these general equations only rest you simply need to just replace the metal name with uh, sorry this metal with the metal name and you get your examples right right okay finally uh, the reaction of metals with dilute acids again I'm going to write the general equation for your people uh, to uh, review right general equation it is going to be metal plus acid and remember whichever acid you use will create that uh, salt right salt name will depend upon both of these right they will combine together to fall salt name right whichever the acid you're using uh, this is just a general equation so there's not going to be any name I'm going to call it um, metallic or metal salt 
right? Whatever the metal we're using, it will form a salt. Plus, uh, it will uh, release hydrogen gas, right? So do not confuse two uh, of these reactions. Along with water is hydrogen produced, and along with uh, acid also hydrogen is used, right? So for example, I'm going to use, uh, let's say, zinc plus sulfuric acid and I told you just there are two acids that we used uh, in your uh, uh, you know class so zinc plus sulfuric acid the name of the salt again will come because of these two right these two will name it up right forget about the word acid but the name of the sulf uh, you know will create this so we call it zinc sulfate right plus hydrogen gas that's as easy as that can get right now, uh, symbolic would be uh, Zn plus H2SO4 gives you ZnSO4. Now, you understand why uh, the name is coming, right? The zinc is here, the sulfate is here, and this part names the acid, acid name, right? This is the acid name. So, just the other part gives you the acid name, and plus H2 gas, right? More examples would be, uh, now, now the acids that we use is uh, acids, right? The acids that can come in your paper, right? I'll give you those names. We have sulfuric acid, right? Uh, forms sulfates, right? Remember, it will form salts, sulfates, right? Those will be called sulfate, right? Uh, then we have uh, hydrochloric acid, right? Or chloric acid, more commonly called but I'm gonna write the whole name hydro chloric acid right and these will form chlorides right because it's a chlorine that is there right then we have nitric acid or uh, also called nitric acid right it will form nitrate right so you can go with the metal here right whatever the metal is there, whichever metal you're reacting with. So the metal name goes there, but these are the salts that will be produced. And the last is carbonic acid, right? Or carbonate, carbonic. And I doubt this will come in your paper anyway, because it's a very difficult one. It forms carbonates, right? This is in grade eight, not in grade seven. So far, I haven't seen any question like this, but even so, I'm just giving you the name that the carbonic acid forms carbonate. So remember these, uh, that sulfuric acid forms sulfates, hydrochloric acid forms chlorides, uh, uh, nitric acid forms nitrates, and carbonic acid forms carbonates, right? So whatever the metal you're reacting the acid with, it is going to form that sulfate. Now, not all metals, right, react with dilute acid. So I'm going to write this, not all metals react with dilute acid, right? And you have seen this in lab. I discussed the reactivity as well that uh, if you remember silver, copper, and uh, the last one, if you remember, I did this in the uh, trivia hunt uh, worksheet as well, right? Uh, iron, these did not react, right? No reaction. We had to use strong acid or concentrated acid. You remember, I, I you know, I took the dropper and poured a direct uh, strong acid or uh, you know fresh acid directly onto these to have the reaction. Other than that, with water-based acid, these were not having reaction. The reason being, these are least reactive metals, right? And that is why for uh, rusting of the iron, it also needs water so that it can react a little bit with uh, iron, right? So least reactive metals. So least reactive metals do not react with dilute acid. So I'm just going to replace this uh, word acid with dilute acid, right? Dilute acid. Dilute acid means it's got a lot of water in it and very little amount of acid. With strong acid, uh, obviously these metals will also react, right? But with dilute acid, no, they won't. And uh, the order of their strength goes this way, right? Uh, silver is least reactive, copper is more, and iron is most reactive, right? So least uh, here and most reactive here, right? So if you if you get any observation table, you can easily crack those questions, right? I hope uh, this clarifies any misconceptions that are still in your head, right? If you've got still any queries, just have a look at, uh, at the book, just go through the book, and it will uh, clarify all the ambiguities that, that are there, and just uh, do remember that these general equations are very, very important uh, for your, uh, you know, paper.
Thank you.